Jesus. That that purpose will be accomplished today. That all that he has reserved for you this very day to make you who you ought to be, to prepare you for his coming, to prepare you for his coming home, for your going home. Pray that the Lord will do it in your life as this message goes on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our most high God, we thank you for this very morning. We give you all the honor and adoration of a truth you are God. And we are so glad and we count ourselves so privileged to be your children. And when we look at the good things, the wonderful things, Lord, you have been doing in our lives since we started this journey. Lord, we count ourselves to be privileged. And we are so glad that, Father, you are our Father, yes. a Father who cares for his own, a Father who is so compassionate and loving, a Father who is still preparing a better and a good place for his people. Father, we thank you for all that in Jesus' name. Amen. But if there is any reason you have brought us into this very worship session today, Father, is that for you, O oh God, to work in our life so that, Lord, you'll be able to achieve the very purpose of you creating us. Holy Spirit, we are counting on you at this moment. You've given us the opportunity to worship our Father in spirit and in truth. You've helped us to sing by the grace of the living God. You've helped us to set the scriptures by the grace You've helped us to pray. You've helped us to sing hymns. You've helped us to do all that is on our own pertaining to the, this worship. And here we have brought us to this extent, the climax of the worship, where the Father is about to speak to us. Holy Spirit, we are counting on you, that you will teach us, Amen. that you will guide us into the truth. Amen. You will help us to understand. Amen. And where necessary, we need conviction. Holy Spirit, we are looking up unto you that you will do so in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, continue with us. Amen. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As you can find, we are talking about a very important message titled The Secrets of the Steadfast Christian. The Secrets of the Steadfast Christian. And I would like us to turn our Bibles to read the first text of our message, which is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. First Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm looking at verse 58. Open your Bibles with me as we read. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I explain this passage, I would like to use another scriptures to explain something important to you. Look at also Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. And I'm looking at verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. And here, when you come back to our text, in that First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says that, for ye know, for as much as ye know, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. But the Christian sister says that, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. And when you look, most of anything we do in life is vanity. Most of anything we do in life is vanity. 
but work like we have read in this text, but the work which is done in the Lord has an internal value. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The work that is done in the Lord is never in vain. Is that one in particular is not vanity. Many things are vanity, but in the work done in the Lord, my brother, is never in vain. And that's why as we look at the message today, the secrets of the Stephas Christian, I want to assure you, we are going to talk about many things, but the most important thing I want you to know that work done in the Lord, when you spend time to do God's will, when you spend time to pursue Christ likeness, when you spend time in searching the scriptures. These are things that have internal value. These are things that are not in vain. Apart from these things, most of the things we done in life, like the, I mean, preacher told us in the Christian text, all is vanity. But I pray that we will pursue these secrets so that we can be steadfast Christians in Jesus' name. Amen. At the outline, steadfastness describes the state of being fair. It describes the state of being fair. And in contrast to looseness or frivolity, you know, but when you lose steadfastness, it's also a state of unchanging. It's a state of unchanging. And in contrast also to being erratic. When you look again, the same steadfastness is a state of being resolute. And when you come in contrast to of being what unstable in what one strongly believes in. So when you look at it, as we talk about the secrets of steadfastness, I want you to look at some of the things which makes the believer fair which makes the believer unchanging, which makes the believer, you know, uh, resolute. And as believers, well, the Lord himself will help us so that we can do such things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's also the moral fixity of Christian. And he is steadfast because he has been able, you know, he has been able to bring himself under the influence of the Holy Ghost, just like clay is in the potter's hand. He's yielded, unaffected by the undolution or the applause of men. The clay relaxes himself in the hand of the potter, of the maker, and he's never, he doesn't hesitate. He doesn't force himself. He just yields himself. And the potter is able to do, you know, what he wants in the life of that clay. And that is what we are talking about this very day. And for he, if we submit to the master's will, let me tell you that the Lord can do what he wants to do in our life. As a servant and priest unto God, he will without delay, you know, undertake any pleasant task in the household of faith, as long as it will bring glory to God and they defy the body of Christ. He is a seeker and a finder, and a true seeker still, for some seek and find, and they seek no more. But I pray that the Lord himself will help us as we go through this, so that the Lord will be able to help us to achieve that state, that state, or being steadfast in our Christian, where we will not be tossed to and flow by every wind of adversity, every wind of you know errors and every wind of doctrines which are moving on here and there. I pray God will see us through in Jesus' name. Amen. At the first point of our message, which is the first subheading of our message, a commitment to doing the will of God after we will look at a commitment to the pursuance Christ-likeness. Then we will look at the commitment to a regular searching of the scriptures. 
Let's look at the first one, a commitment to doing the will of God. A commitment to doing the will of God. You know, God will for mankind and for the Christian in particular, God's will for mankind and the Christian in particular, my brother, is as clear as the new day. And only the wise will take heed and do it. And I believe you are one of those wise people. And that you will take heed to these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And I tell you as we are going on, all praying, all fasting, all Bible meditation, all church activities, oh, women fellowship, children singles fellowship, couples fellowship, and all prayer vigils and every other thing. Let me tell you, brethren, it's useless if you consistently tread and underfoot what you know to be the will of God. If you consistently tread upon it, you may be thinking that, oh, I'm doing something in the church. Oh, I'm going to this, I mean, uh, uh, occasion, this activity, I'm doing this or that. Whatever you are doing, if you do it, but then you are still treading upon the will of God. Let me tell you, it's useless. It doesn't, I mean, amount to anything. Look, for example, the book of Psalms. Psalm 40, and I'm looking at verse 6 to 8. Psalm 40, looking at verses 6 to 8. The book of Psalm, Psalm 40, and I'm reading verses 6 to 8. It says over here that sacrifice and offering does thou not desire. My ears has thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required? Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The passage, especially in that verse six, the passage does not repudiate you know, the act of offering. The passage does not nullify the act of sacrifice. However, the most important issue is delight in God's will. It doesn't put those sacrifices away. It doesn't put, yes, I mean, uh, 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 offering away. But the most delight something is what? Is to do the will of God. That is what God delights most in it. And as we are talking about the will of God, my brother is so important, be committed to do the will of God. Be committed to do the will of God. And I want to repeat it. You're praying and fasting. I want to repeat it. Church activities. I want to repeat it. Whatever meditation, whatever thing you'll be doing in your Christian life, if you still tread upon the will of God, it's useless. Those things you'll be doing, it will amount to nothing. It will amount to nothing, but the Lord will do us good. Amen. We will do things, we will do God's will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you accept God's will, let me tell you something, you are accepting God himself. And the reverse also holds. When you accept God's will, one way thing or other, you don't open your mouth to say it, but look, you are just saying that I accept God himself. And you may be asking, Pastor, is that so? Of course it is. I'm so sure. Look at it also in the book of First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 8. Let me give you a typical example. First Samuel chapter 8. I'm reading at verse 7. First Samuel chapter 8, looking at verse 7, a very important passage. First Samuel chapter 8, I'm reading verse 7. The Bible says over here, First Samuel 8, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, 
hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. You know, this was the time that the children of Israel have confronted prophet Samuel. They say, Samuel, you are old. And it's like as if your children are not following your ways. They are not doing things like you, you, you do. And what we want is that make us a king so that the king will judge like you will judge us like all the nation. But the Bible says that when they made that comment, someone was not happy and he pleaded with them. He begged them, he told them, you need to resign this statement. You need to resign this decision. The people said, no, they were bent on. So Samuel, what did he do? He went before the Lord God and he spoke to the Lord God that this is what these people say they want. And in response, this is what the Lord told them in that verse seven that I read in. And the Lord said unto Samuel, you hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they do unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have done what? Rejected me, that I should reign over them. Someone told them, he gave them all the explanation that look, it's God who is judging over you. Whatever I'm doing is direct from God. But the people said, no, we don't want that one. We want somebody. And God now has to tell them, he said, look, you have not rejected my word. The truth is that you have rejected me, God, myself. And that is what it implies. And the moment also you accept God's will and you are living your life as a Christian as a, by the God's will, let me tell you what you are implying is that you accept the personality of God. Even though you don't open your mouth to say it, but that is what you are saying. And that's why be committed, be committed to do the will of God always. Many Christians have not been able to take their stand because they are not able, they, they are out to please men. They are out to please men. They are out to please men. Look at Galatians chapter one, verse 10. Galatians chapter one, verse 10. And my brother, I will encourage you. My sister, I'm encouraging you. Don't be men pleasers. Look at the warning. Look at the things that the word of God says. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. For I do now persuade men. Or for I for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, men pleasers are servant of, you know, men, men, men pleasers are not servant of God. They are not servant of Christ. Like Paul is saying here, he say, if I yet please men, then I should not be a servant of God. And what he's saying is that men pleasers are not servant of Christ. Men pleasers are servant of the people. They please the people. They please the people. But I pray your own will not be like that in Jesus' name. Amen. To have abandoned God's will altogether simply because of personal needs, simply because of the peer pressure, simply because of severe trials. That's what has made many people, many people to be like that. But by God's grace, no matter how your needs are, don't abandon the will of God. Don't put the will of God away. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't put the will of God away. I remember a brother who used to tell me, he used to ask me, he said, look, pastor, I, that, uh, I have to go to commission. And look at me. Am I, what am I going to say? Already I make up my mind not to tell a lie, but to speak the truth that I came to this country because of I want a better life. Nobody is chasing me from my country. Nobody is pursuing me. There is nothing against me in my country, but this is what. And he was asking me, he said, what will I do? My brother, and I have to tell him plain. He said, somebody even told him, he said, ah, no, you can do this, you can do this. Even Pastor David, no. I said, yes, the fact that I know doesn't mean that I sanction it. 
I know people do like this. People do like this to do it, to get this thing and get other things. There are many people who are doing fraudulent means to get their papers. And I have to tell the brother, I explained that day. I told him many things. And I said, look, take your stand. The will of God, you should not sin. You should not lie. I said, look at it. Many Christians today, we are so easy, we used to say, and sometimes we will talk, we say, ah, look at Esau. Esau sold his birthright. Look at the valuable thing like that, and you sold it. And I would remember I told her brother, I say, how many Christians? Are there not Christians today who are selling their birthright? They have salvation, but because of maybe marriage, they sell their birthright. When they, they, they have salvation, but because of maybe job they are looking for, they will sell that birthright. They have salvation, but because of papers they are looking for, they don't bother, they can tell lies, they can bribe, they can do many things. Is it not the same of like you saw, selling birthright? They don't have value for their salvation. And the will of God is that, that all men will be saved. And you will sell your birthright, you will get into sin, and you will be a sinner. You will die, you will go into Christless eternity. My brother, you have sold your best right like Esau. And the same thing, the Bible is telling us over here, many don't let personal needs, don't let the peer pressure because of what people are saying, because the common people are making about you, the, that you are a Christian, that you are a believer. Some of your stand, people are just talking about it. And because of that, you abandon God's will. Don't let it happen to you. But the Stephen Christian has learned to be delight himself in God's will, to put God first, whatever the cost. Even though such commitment may invite persecution, some, sometimes it may invite misunderstanding and even rejection. But I pray you will stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Acts, Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. And I'm looking at verse 19. Acts chapter 14, I'm looking at verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 14, I'm looking at verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who, persuade, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Delby. And when he had preached the gospel to the city and has taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the source of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith. And that we, must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Look Hallelujah. at John chapter 7, the book of John chapter 7. John chapter 7, and I'm reading verse 17. John chapter 7, I'm looking at verse 17. The book of John chapter 7, verse 17. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Praise the name of the Lord. My brother, who I read in us, you saw my tribulation, there were problems, there were difficulty, even though there were misunderstanding persecution here and there. When Paul rose up after he had been beaten, collapsed, the moment he got himself up, the Bible says he still went to another place to visit, to preach the gospel over there. Don't let the will of God is that we should preach, go into the world, preach the gospel, and nothing should hinder us, nothing should be an obstruction to us in doing that. That is the will of God. Be committed to doing the will of God. My brother, if you look into the scriptures, if you look into the scriptures, we learn from the scriptures, one thing of the thing you learn from the scriptures is that about the will of God. And it is the will of God 
that no soul should perish. He said, no, I'm not willing that any soul should perish. And that tells you that we need to preach the gospel. We need to preach the gospel, no matter how it is, preach the gospel. God is not willing. Do the will of God. His will that no soul should perish. No backslider should remain a backslider. That is his will. When you come to Thessalonians, it tells us, and this is the will of God, even your sanctification. My brother, have you sanctified? My sister, are you sanctified? Brethren, let me ask you, are you sanctified? You say you are born again for all this why? Have you occurred to you that there is another will of God for you? Yes, it is his will that you should be born again. This is his will that you should believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God you have believed on the Lord. Have you sought that will, the second work of grace, that you should be sanctified? Have you sought that, 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 that will? It is very, very important. Seek for the will of God. Be committed to the will of God. It is the will of God that we give God thanks in every situation, in every condition in which we are. He's saying in all things, my brother, yes, not everything is good. Not everything is bad, you know. But the Bible is telling us that in everything, thank God, praise his mind. That is the will of God for you and I. Do you thank him? Do you praise him? When things are awkward, when things are crooked, do you thank him to praise him? Remember, it is the will of God. Oh, if you be committed to God's will, you will be steadfast, you will be unchangeable, you will be resolute in your Christian life. Nothing will be able to shake you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's important that in every simple matters, in short, let me tell you, in every simple matters, every believer must find out what is the will of God and obey it. You must seek for the will of God and obey it. Because like I told you, you may do every other activities. If you are not doing the will of God, those activities are useless. They are nothing to talk home about. It will not lead you to anywhere. It is only those who do the Father's will. It's only those. Look at the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And I'm looking at from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6. I'm looking at verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Be done in this earth. Who is going to do the will? If we, have, we, we put aside the will of God, it's you and I. Let's do the will of God. And by the time you are doing the will of God, my brother, my sister, nothing will shake you, nothing will move you. And the Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And I'm looking at verse 46. Matthew 12, verse 46. Matthew 12, 46. While he yet spake, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto, unto, unto him, God told him, who is my mother and who is my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand and towards his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brethren. Praise the name of the Lord. For who shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brethren and my brother, my sister, and my mother. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am the brother of Jesus. I am the brother of Jesus. I am the brother of Jesus. I am doing the will of God. I am the brother of Jesus. He said the same. Those who do the will, they are his brethren. 
I pray God will give us the grace we will do his will in Jesus' name. Amen. Just to point number two, a commitment to the pursuance Christ likeness. A commitment to the pursuance Christ likeness. Pursuing to be like Jesus. Pursuing to be like Christ. My brother, it's a very important, important, important secret. It's a very important secret. If you want to live an unshakable life, if you want to live an unchangeable life, if you want to live a life of resolute, if you want to live a firm life, my brother, one of the things, pursue to be like Christ. Pursue to be like Christ. That makes them, there are things that make them to be what? To be selfish Christian, you know, pursuing to be like Christ. It's one of the things that makes one to be a steadfast Christian. Look at Psalm 42. Psalm 42, the book of Psalm. Psalm 42, and I'm looking at verse 1 and 2. Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul tested for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Look at the psalmist. He said, look, what I'm looking for. I just want, I just want. My, my soul is testing after God, for the living God. And I'm looking at when, when I will appear before this, my God. When I will appear before this, my God. Psalm 63. Verse 1 to 3. Psalm 63, and I'm looking at verses 1 to 3. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 3. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Has a standard, my brother. When we talk about the steadfast Christian, when you find anybody who is steadfast in his Christian life, he have a standard. He have a standard. He have a model. He constantly, he, he, he constantly has in view. And because of that, nothing changes him. Because of that, nothing pushes him. He so suffers because he has a model. He's looking at that model. He has a standard that he is always looking at that standard and he's making sure that he achieved that standard. And because of that, that's why he suffers. That's why we call him a steadfast Christian. You can't move him. You can't change his mind. He's stable. No wind of adversity, no pressure, no you know, mis uh, misinterpretation, no persecution can move that person. He's so stable. He's steadfast in his Christian life. And because the, the reason is that the person has a model he's looking at. Just like the Bible tells us, in Hebrews chapter 12, you know, verses 1 and 2, telling us that over there, he said that Jesus, Jesus, because of the joy, because of the joy, because of the joy that he knew he was going to get, the Bible said he endured the cross. He was looking at the cross, at the, at the reward. He was looking at the, the joy that will come to him by the time he goes through the crucifixion. By the time he goes through the, I mean, the, 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 the problem of Calvary, he was looking at it. That's why he was able, he was able to endure all the misrepresentation. That's why he was able to endure all the persecution. That's why he was able to endure the torturing, my brother, that he went through before he went on Calvary. It's because he was looking and we the same thing. If we have a model, if we have a standard we want to achieve, we want to make, my brother, it will make you to be unshakable. 
It will make you to be what? Unmovable. It will make you to be resolute, my brother, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation that you find yourself on this journey. I pray the Lord God Almighty he will help us. So the separate Christian has a standard. We have a model he constantly has in view. And that standard is who? Is Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. He's our model. He's our standard. Look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew 11, and I'm looking at verse 28. Matthew chapter 11. Let's look at from verse 28. Matthew chapter 11. Let's look at verse 28. What the scripture says over here. It said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to tell you, the yoke of the Lord is easy. The yoke of the Lord is easy. His yoke is not like the one of Satan. Look at the yoke of Satan. Before Satan give you something, you find people, have, have you find people who are well to do because of what they are looking for? They go to this Babalawa, they go to this witch doctors, or they go to even the, all these false prophets. And sometimes they make some concussions for them. Things that if in their homes, they have given that thing to them, they will not drink. But because they are seeking something from the Satan, from the devil, and the devil will tell you that what you are looking for, look, you need to do this thing. Let me tell you, the yoke of the devil is heavy, but the yoke of Jesus is so light. When you have problem, you say, look, he that you have you not even called upon me, he that you have you not prayed, Jesus will tell you, with this your problem, pray. Jesus will tell you, this is your problem. If only you can repent, if only you can turn away from this thing. This, the yoke of the Lord, that's why he was telling them. He said, my yoke is easy, but my burden is light. Look at people who are looking for money. There were the other day I was speaking with people, people who are looking for money. Youngsters looking for money. You know, people who are looking for money. Look at the yoke of the devil for getting that thing. And by the time some of them, they get that thing after that, the sacrifices they ought to make, sometimes family members, sometimes their own children, they need to sacrifice them. Let me tell you, brethren, the yoke of the devil is so heavy, is so hard. The yoke of Jesus. Look at what he said. For my yoke is easy and my burden is what? Is light. That's why he's calling us. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek, we should learn of Christ. If you learn of Christ, my brother, oh, your life will be different. It will be a, 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 a different thing altogether in Jesus' name. Amen. The of the devil, like I said, it's so difficult, it's so hard. There are some people, by the time they go, after they will be asking, Baba, why didn't you tell me that this is what I have to do after I get this thing? They will never tell you. No, that is not the game. They will never tell you. It's after you have got into it, they will tell you that this is what you need to carry along with what you have got. But I pray God will help us. Jesus is our standard. And if you follow him, if you follow him, his yoke is easy. His yoke is light. You can carry it. What is it that he's telling you you can't do? You will be able to do it. But apart from that, if you can follow him, my brother, look at his compassion, look at his mercy, look at his care, look at his loving kindness. If you follow him to do all those things, my brother, it, 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 it's light, it's not all that difficult. His grace is there. He will be able to help us to do it in Jesus' name. So Amen. as you are talking, therefore, he's overrun driving when you find somebody you know who's he make who who is a, a, want to be a steadfast Christian. He have a standard. He have a model. And like I said, that standard, that model is Christ. 
Therefore, that individual, his overall driving and pursuit, his total ambition and craving is to be like who? Is to be like Christ. Is to be like Christ. Always that person, he wants to be like Christ. Always that person, he wants to be like Christ. My brother, be committed to be like Christ. Look at the Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, and I'm looking at verse 7. Oh, what a passage. What a passage. What a passage. Philippians chapter 3, and I'm looking at verse from verse 7. Philippians 3, from verse 7. My prayer is that we will have the mind of Paul in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win who? Christ. He wanted to win Christ. My brother, make a resolute that you must win Christ. You must win Christ. Verse 9 says, and be found in him, not only to win him, but I want to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is of, which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at how Paul did. He said he counted everything. He put everything aside. He wanted to be like Christ. He wanted to know him. He wanted to be like him. He said that I might win him. I must be in him. I must be him. And I must win him. And I must be found also in him. That everybody will see me. They know that I'm in Christ. Everybody will know that I'm in Christ. Without me talking, people will see my action. People will see my behavior. People will see my attitude. People will see my character. People will see whatever I do. Without me talking, people will know that this one is in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what we must do. If you want to be a steadfast Christian, and Paul, because of that, when we read on, he said that, look, this one thing I do, I forget everything. I forget everything. I put everything aside. It's not that I've even obtained. It's not that I've been apprehended. But this one thing I do, pressing forward towards the mark of my high calling, brethren, because he wanted to know, he wanted to be in Christ. He wanted to be like Christ, a commitment to of, of what? A, a commitment to the pursuance Christ-likeness. Brethren, I pray that that will be our commitment in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you that when you make that one your focus, you know, you make that one your focus, you won't compromise. You see many people who compromise because they, they, they don't have focus. They don't have focus. They don't have model. They don't have a standard. Any wind which is blowing, anything which is passing on, any type of life they can choose, anything which is moving on in the world. Once it is the latest in town, they can choose to do it. But the believer, let me tell you, who is to want to be a steppers, who want to want to get there, where you have a model standard, he make Christ his focus, you cannot change that man. You cannot move him. Nothing will change that man. Nothing you will present to him will influence him. No temptation will bring that person down because he have a standard and that standard must not be broken. And as much as he have that standard, you know, he can stand, he can move on. I pray, my brother, like we are talking, we want to be step as Christian. Enough is enough with all this, you know, changing Christians, with all this, you know, all this unstable Christianity, all this erratic Christianity. Enough is enough. We must be step as Christian. True Christians who are unchangeable. Christians, my brother, who are resolute. Christians who are firm in their journey. 
I pray God will give us the grace as we move on in Jesus' name. In Amen. his in pattern, you know, like we are talking about, anybody who has make, who wants to make Christ exist in, in his thinking pattern, you know, he, he is clean and noble. His thinking pattern is clean and noble. Look at Christ, Christ thinking. Christ is, is, is noble. His thinking, I mean, pattern is noble. In dressing, a Christian who wants to be like Christ, even in his dressing, moderation is in view. In, in his dressing, is modest. In his dressing, moderation is in view. No, he don't do things like the people in the world. No, he don't do things like the people of the world. No, he can't do that. He has a standard. He has a model. And the model is that let your apple, let your dressing be a modest not costly apparel, praise the name of the Lord. And he used those as his standard and you must live by those things. And when you find somebody like that, my brother, you can say this one is a what? A, 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 is a, a, a self a Christian. Not only that, it's anybody who has made crisis missing in his relationship, he's honest and he's fair. In his relationship, he's honest and he's fair. You don't relate to that person, and that person will be playing you for one night. You don't relate to that person, and that person will be telling you that, oh, sit down here. While my brother, if you sit down there, it will take you two months you will never see. The person will tell you, sit down. If you sit down there, you are doomed. And there are many people like that. But yeah, the person who makes Christ a standard, who is looking at Christ, like Christ himself, his relationship was honest. Look at the relationship Christ had with us. Look at the relationship Christ had with us. It was honest, it was fair. He told even his disciples, he said, look, I, you are my friends. You are no more even my servants. I don't count you as servants anymore. You are my friends. And friends in the sense that whatever my father have shown me, I've shown it to you. Whatever I hear from my father, I don't keep it. I tell the truth to you. And that is what a good, a honest relationship, a fair relationship, a, I mean, a, a, a fair relationship. What about his forgiveness? What about the forgiveness of Christ? In his forgiveness, he, he forgive with what? With cheerfulness. He forgive with what? With readiness. He's always ready, ready to forgive, ready to forgive ready to forgive. He looked at that woman. He said, ah, where are your people, your accusers? He said, ah, there is nobody. He said, okay, I also, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. That is Christ. He's easily, and he will forgive. He will forgive. I pray we will be like Christ in Jesus' name. How Amen. often do you forgive? How long does it take you to forgive? There are many of us we will drag our feet, we will drag our feet. My brother, say, be like Christ. Pursue Christ likeness. And by the time you are pursuing Christ likeness, you will get to the area of his, uh, his, 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 I mean, his forgiveness, the way you forgive people. And if you for, for pursue the way Christ forgives us, my brother, there is nothing. There is nothing you can't forgive. Do you know what the Bible tells us in Ephesians? He said that be kind towards one another, forbearing one another, you know, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake did what? Forgave us. You must forgive like that. And Christ, that is what he did. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, it was not that we were good. It was not that we were righteous. It was not that some of us, our lives were, were somehow better. No. We were so sinners. We were evil doers. We were enemies of God. But even in that state, he still volunteered to die for us. That is forgiveness. My brother, can you do that? Seek, pursue to be Christ-like. Pursue to be Christ-like. And by the time you pursue all these areas, my brother, it will make you to be steadfast. There are many believers today who are suffering because of unforgiveness. But if they can pursue to be like Christ, to the point that they will be like Christ, even in his forgiveness, they will not suffer. 
They will not be going through all those torture and all those problems that they are going through because of unforgiveness. The Lord God, he will help us in Jesus' name. What about in the area of his, of, of, of his prayer? Christ's prayer, look at the way he prayed. He prayed fervent. Look at the way he prayed. He prayed ceaseless. And he has been telling us, he said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. He told us, he said that, look, pray without season. And he have told us, he said that, look, that we should pray fervently, fervently. The prayer of the, of, of the fervent prayer of the righteous, it availeth much. Because he himself, he prayed. You remember in the Garden of Eden, the Bible said he prayed fervently to the point that even the sweat coming down was thick like what? Was like, like blood. It was like blood. He prayed fervently. He prayed ceaselessly. He prayed. He prayed. I pray that we will learn all these things in Jesus' name. In his humility, he was so lowly. In his humility, he was so lowly and he was so me. He was so lowly and he was so me. And in his purity, he was upright and he was jealous. He was jealous. He was jealous. I pray God will see us through. The steadfast Christian has that resolute will and determination to follow the footsteps of his master. Little wonder he stands where others have taken, have, have taken a mighty fall. And I pray you will not fall in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember I read a book many years ago. The, the, the book is titled In His Steps. In His Steps. It's a book I've read almost, I read it those days about three times, where people decided, a group of people in the church, they decided, oh, we are going to follow Christ. We want to do like Christ. We are going to walk in the steps of Christ. And they now make a resolution. They say, we dare not, any one of us, whatever decision, whatever action that you want to take, whatever thing you want to do, you should never do it without asking yourself that if it is Christ, what will Christ do? If you want to say anything, maybe something has happened, you want to react, you ask yourself in this situation, if it is Christ, what will Christ, how, how will Christ re react? And that is the thing that, you know, they bind themselves with this thing. And the, when you read that story, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. Many of them, I remember one of them, who was so popular, that man was rich because he had a newspaper and you know, he is a new newspaper owner. And the man, the moment he took that step, that look, I'm going to live like Christ. He asked himself, he got to a point, he went to his, you know, the, his company, the newspaper listening, and he, told, he called the editor and he now started to tell him, he said, remove this advert from the newspaper. Remove this advert from this new paper. Remove this advert from this new paper. And you know the newspapers, the what they make their money from is the advert they do, the publicity they do. And he started telling the man, he said, this publicity of uh, beer, remove it. This publicity of this uh, uh, cigarette, remove it. Remove this one, remove this one. Then the editor asked him, he said, but boss, do you know something? If we remove these ones, nobody will buy newspaper again. And some of the news they carry, they, he asks himself, because he asks himself, if this newspaper is, belongs to Jesus, will Jesus allow this thing to be coming into my newspaper? Will Jesus allow this advert to be, be in my newspaper? And he did that, you know, when he started also doing it, he started losing. People were not buying the newspaper. But the point is, the fact that he has done that thing, he was happy. And many of the people like that, if you read that story, many of them like that, they suffered one thing the other. But my brother, my sister, when you do all those things, remember, he has gone to prepare a place for you. Amen. I say he has gone to prepare a place for you. Amen. And he will, he will take you up to himself. Be like Christ. In everything we do, be like Christ. 
the Lord, he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will do us good. That leads us to the last point, a commitment to a regular searching of the scriptures. A commitment to the regular searching of the scriptures. Your growth in your Christian experience depends on many, many factors. Many, many factors. Many factors. An essential aspect hinges on practicing what you know from the Bible. And the time you allocate also, it is an indication of your value and your appreciation for it. Let me repeat it again, because it's so important. And a special aspect, aspect hinges on practicing the way we are, our Christian experience, if you are going to grow, if you are going to grow or you are not going to grow, let me tell you, it depends on these factors. Which factors am I talking about? It's for the fact of you, the way you practice or you do things from the Bible. Not only that, the time even you allocate, you know, to your Bible, the value you put on your Bible, the way, that, the way you appreciate the Bible, those are the things, it depends on that. Those are the things that will show whether you will grow or you will not grow. It's so important. And if I may ask you this morning, do you even appreciate the Bible, the word of God? Do you value the word of God? The answer I will receive from you is positive. Everybody will say, yes, I appreciate the Bible. I value the Bible. And I, I, that, that is all that I will receive from everyone that you ask this question. But do you know something? I will know it by the time you spend. I will know whether you value this Bible. I will know whether you appreciate this Bible by the time you spend, by the time you spend on your Bible and the time also you spend with your smartphone, the time you spend with your social media, the time you spend, you know, with the television, the time you spend, my brother, with other things. If you want to value your appreciation of the Bible, if you want to value your appreciation of the, of the Bible, compare those things. If you don't compare them, it's so easy for you to say that, yes, I value this Bible more than anything. It's so easy for you to say that, yes, I love this Bible more than anything. But when you love something, you spend time with that thing. Is that not it? You spend time with it. Something that you are interested in, something that you like, you spend time with that thing. And if you spend time on social media more than your Bible, can you tell me that you love Bible more than the social media? If you spend more time with, I mean, with, 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 with uh, I mean, your smartphone, can you tell me that you, you love the Bible, the word of God more than this? It's so easy to say that. But my prayer is that we will be committed to regular searching of the scriptures. You know, this is something I always say. The moment I, anytime I speak about the scriptures, I speak about the Bible, I always want to repeat it. Because I found many believers are not doing it. There are many believers, and like I repeat in my church always, believers that they have been born again for many years. They have never been able to read through the Bible. Not even once in their lifetime they became children of God. Not once in their lifetime they became children of God. They have never read even the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. They have never read it once. And it's so easy now for we to do it. My brother, spend time, spend time in this Bible that you'll be able to be steadfast. In this Bible that my brother, you'll be able to stand. If you put this Bible away, oh, like somebody said, he said that is either Bible take sin away from your life or sin will take the Bible from you. It's either these two. It's either these two. And if you don't read the Bible to know what is expected of you, what you ought to be doing, what you ought not to be doing, my brother, 
Oh, many things will come, will crumble into your life. But I pray that you will be committed to a regular searching of the scriptures in Jesus' name. Let me read some few passages. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, and I'm reading verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, sorry. Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading verse 15. It says, steady to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to study. The Bible is telling us here, encouraging us, exhorting us. It says, steady to show yourself approved. Steady, steady, steady. You can't show yourself approved without steady. It takes only studying to show yourself approved of the rightly dividing the word of truth. Look at the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, and I'm reading verses 10 to 12. The book of Acts chapter 17, and I'm reading verses, Acts chapter 17, verses 10 to 12. This is talking about the Berean Christian. And the brethren immediately, verse 10, and the brethren immediately sent Paul away and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Why? In that because they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. This were Berean Christian. The Bible said that when Paul has preached, they, when Paul has preached, they will, they will study the word. They will go. They will read the word. They will compare the scriptures with scripture to see whether those things, those things, those things that Paul has preached, whether those things were true. They were the things that Paul was taught, taught teaching. They wanted to know, they wanted to know, find out whether those things were true. They would set the scriptures. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy by then. Do you know that this, the, in, in the olden time, the whole scriptures, the Bible, it was not divided into chapters. It was not divided into verses. It was not, it was only recently a year, 1260 AD that the Bible was what was divided. It was year 1260 that the Bible was divided. And the Bible says over here that this Berean Christian at that time, how did they search through the Bible? The whole thing was like a book complete without chapter, without verses. How did they, it was more difficult by then. Today, if you want to set the scriptures, if you want to compare scriptures, it's so easy. It's so easy. But in those days, the Bible said that even with all that difficulty, these people, they will go. They will serve the scriptures. They want to find out whether those things were true. Brethren, it's more easier for us today. But the more easier it is for us today, the more we are taking things for granted. The more we are taking things for granted. The more we are taking things for granted. Today, if you want to read the scriptures, my brother, there are even applications that we can put even on our phone. Bible application, this thing, that you can be reading along with it. It's so easy for us today, but the more easier it is, the more difficult we are finding or we are making use of those opportunities. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, and I'm looking at verse 16. Isaiah 34, I'm looking at verse 16, the book of Isaiah, chapter 34. I'm looking at verse 16. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her maid, for my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit, it has guarded them. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at the first part is telling you, encouraging you, 
and it's a commandment, my brother, it's not a choice. He says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Read it, read it, read it, read it. I pray the Lord will do as good. Look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah 15, verse 16. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 16. Jeremiah 15, I'm looking at verse 16. It says, thy word were found, and I did eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. If Jeremiah, you know, it takes somebody to search. It says somebody to see. If you have not seek those words, he wouldn't have found them. That is one thing you need to understand. He, he, he said that words were found. He just, he just didn't find those words like that. He sought for those words. He sought for those words. And by seeking for it, he found them. He said that words were found, and I did eat them. And that, words, that word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I pray we will seek for the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. The word Amen. of God is so important. It's so important. Look at what the psalmist also said. The psalmist says some few things concerning the word of God. Psalm 119. Let's go because Psalm 119 speaks a lot about the word. Let's read some few of them. Psalm 119. I'm reading verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 11. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. My brother, if you are not committed to the word, how can you hide that word in your heart? How can you keep that word in your heart? Why can you do it? And if you can do it, like he said, you will not sin against God in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 60. Verse 60. Look at verse 60. Verse 60 says, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Keep the commandments of God. Keep the commandments of God. Verse 92. Look at verse 92. Verse 92. Psalm 119, verse 92. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in my affliction. This was David. Look at what he was talking. He said, if you have not, if I have not delight in thy word, oh, I will have perished in my affliction. But thank God, thank God, he delighted in the word of God. And through the word of God, you will know that God is your present help in time of need. Through the word of God, you will know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them. Through the word of God, you will know that he will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that the righteous may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. It's through the word of God. And so when things become awkward and difficult, because of that word, it will keep you stand. It will keep you firm. You'll be able to stand in Jesus' name. But if you don't have the word of God, if you don't have the word of God, my brother, what are you going to stand on? When the wind of adversity begins to blow, when do are you going to stand up? When the storms of life, my brother, begin to stumble around, when the, the, the storms begin to blow, what are you going to stand upon? My brother, it's all about the word of God. Search the word of God. Be regular searching of the scriptures. You know what he said? I sent my word. And that word healed the people and delivered them from destruction. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, yeah, yeah, send that word. As you find that word, it will bring healing. As you bring, find that word, my brother, it will strengthen you. Are you heading towards any place that you ought not to be heading towards that place? Are you walking in a way? Are you living in a life that, my brother, you ought not to live? It is through the word. When you, he sent that word, that word, my brother, will deliver you from destruction in Jesus' name. Yeah. And look at what this man of God spoke about. There is a man known as, you know, Jennifer uh, 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 Dix. Dix, like many people know, we have what we call Dix Anontated Bible. It's the name of the man they put on that Bible. It's a very wonderful Bible. 
dates and untated reference Bible and look at the tribute that this man dates, you know, gave on up, he paid to the Bible when he said, look at what he said. He said, the Bible will work wonders in your life. The Bible will work wonders in your life. If you acted upon by faith, if you acted upon by, and by sincerity, he said the Bible, it contains light to direct you. It contains light to direct you. And not only that, the Bible, it comforts to cheer, I mean, it, it, it comforts and to cheer also to cheer you up. It is the traveler's map. The Bible is the traveler's map. People will travel, sometimes they need map. When you go to Rome city, the tourists, when they come, is the map they use to move around. My brother, and this man was praying to me, he said, look, the Bible is the traveler's map. We know that you and I, we are on our journey. You know that you and I, we are on a pilgrimage. We are heading towards a place. Here is not our city. Here is not our dwelling place. We are seeking for that home. The home which is maker, is a builder, is God almighty. We are going to that place. We are on a journey. And how can we get to that destination? And set we go through this map. This map will direct us. This map will show us the way. This map will make us to know where there are valleys. The map will show us where there are mountains. The map will show us how we can overcome this mountain. It is this mountain. And look at what the man said. He said, it is the traveler's map. It is the pilgrim's staff. It is the pilot's compass. And not only that, it is the soldier's sword. It is by this sword, my brother, that we come against the devil. It is by this sword, my brother, we fight against the enemy. It is by the word of God, my brother, we are able to confront the enemy. That's why he's saying that because of, of, of he said because of this, Christ is his ground subject. When you read through the Bible, all you will find is Christ Jesus. Christ is his ground subject. He is our good, our good is, is his design. And the glory of God is its end. Because of that, it should fill with, I mean, it should fill, it should, it should fill your memory. Let the word of God fill your memory. Let it rule over your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the word of God rule over your heart. The Bible said there are many devices in the heart of man. There are many devices. The heart want to do this. The heart want to do this. No wonder Jeremiah told us. He said that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You know, with this morning we were talking about said the scriptures over here, and we are talking that there are some people who commend themselves. There are some people who you know commend themselves above the way the, the uh, way they ought not to commend themselves. It's because of the heart. The heart is deceitful. Is the heart which makes them to think that, oh, they are like this. Is the heart which makes them to think that, yes, they, they are this level. Is the heart which makes them to think that they are this position. Is the heart. The heart is deceitful. Is deceitful. Is deceitful. But if you can read the word of God, the heart, the word of God will rule over your heart. And it will tell your heart that, look, you are nobody. Without Christ, you are nobody. Without Christ, every dream you have is a shattered dream. Without Christ, you are going nowhere. Without Christ, everything you have in life is vanity. It is, it is the word of God that will make you to know all these things. I pray that we will take heed to this word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We will allow the word to rule your heart. And he says that the word of God, the Bible is your guide. Your, it's a guide, it guides your feet in righteousness, it guides your feet in true holiness. And that's why he encourages us. He says, read it, read it slowly, read it frequently, read it prayerfully, read it meditatively, read it searchingly, read it devotionally, read it true and true until it becomes part of your being and generate faith to move mountains, the Bible, it's a mind of wealth, the source of health.
The Bible is a world of pleasure. It is given to you in this life. Will be open also at the judgment and will stand forever. That is the Bible. And I pray that this Bible will not stand against us in Jesus' name. On Amen. that judgment day, this Bible will not stand against us in Jesus' name. But as Amen. it's open and it's open, oh, it will bring commendation unto the life you have lived in Jesus' name. And if you can allocate sufficient time to the word of God, in searching the word of God, in keeping the word of God in your heart, and practicing what you know from the Bible, you will not be, a, you know, you, 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 you will not cease to be a steadfast Christian. The Bible will make you to be a steadfast Christian in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How can you depend upon the Bible? How can you spend time with the Bible, read the Bible, and never be a steadfast Christian? It's not possible. It's not possible. The Bible will make you to be a steadfast Christian. Brethren, yeah. I pray God will give us the grace to do all this in Jesus' name. Amen. What have we learned this morning? We have learned this morning that the secrets of Stephan Christian. These are some of the secrets. These are, these are not all, but these are some of the secrets. A commitment in doing God's will. A commitment, my brother, a, a, a commitment in, in pursuing Christ's likeness. A commitment in searching of the word of God. Rise up on your feet and let us pray and call upon the name of the Lord and ask the Lord that the Lord will give us the grace. You know, the things of God, it takes the grace of God. And remember this year, it's a year of what? Abiding grace. Abiding grace. A year of abiding grace and abounding. A year of abiding and abounding. A year of abiding and abounding. And my brother, you must abound in this grace also the grace to be committed to the will of God, the grace to be committed in doing the will of God, the grace to be committed in pursuance of Christ's likeness. Open your mouth at this moment and begin to pray that God will make you, God will make you to abound in this grace also. God will make you to abound in this grace also. Oh, thank God for the grace of God upon your life. Thank God for what the Lord is doing by his grace in your life. But pray also that you are bound in this area. You are bound in this area in the grace of commitment to doing the will of God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. My brother, the Lord has spoken. The Lord has shown you some few things. Oh, respond to him. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. The Lord don't want you to be living your life that just living your life like that. There are many Christians, my brother, every wind, every wind is blowing them. Every wind is blowing. They are just like a tree leaves. You know, any wind which is blowing, is blowing them. He blows them to the north. He blows them to the south. He blows them to the... No, my brother, you should be a steadfast Christian. You should be a steadfast Christian. You should be a firm Christian. You should be an unchangeable Christian. My brother, pray. Pray. He was blessed. You be, my brother, a resolute Christian. A Christian who is all resolute, things you have put in place, my brother, nothing will change you. If they come even to give you money, oh, my brother, to do commit evil, to go against my brother, your son, that you will not, you will not, you will not, you will not do it. You will not do it because you are standing. My brother, pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. And let the Lord help you this morning. Let the Lord help you this morning. It takes the grace, my brother, to do the will of God. It takes the grace at a time that, my brother, the will of your parents, the will of your neighbors, the will of your friends, the will of your, of your husband, the will of your, I mean, of your, of your wife, the will, my brother, of your colleagues will be in contrast with them. It will be in contrary to the will of God. My brother, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It takes the grace of God. My brother, pray and call upon the Lord that, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, help me more grace for me to be committed. More grace for me to be committed. Commitment, commitment, commitment in doing the will of God. 
my brother pray that no matter what the persecution, no matter what the challenges, no matter what the obstacles, no matter what the influence of the devil, no matter what, my brother, the roaring of the enemy, oh, to move me, to take me, let me be committed to your will. The will, the will of living a righteous and holy life, the will of living a pure life, the will, my brother, of praying, the will of doing God's will, the will pray and call upon the name of the living God. My brother pray, God himself has said, he said until, until he's working in us, until he achieve, until we come to the very image of his dear son. My brother, you and I know we are never going to the very image of his dear son. That's why we need to pray. That's why we need to call upon the Lord, that the Lord will help us, that the Lord will help us, that we will not be tired, we will not get tired, we will not get tired, that Christ will be our focus. Christ will be our model. Christ will be our standard. My brother, no matter what we are seeing all around, my brother, pray, 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 that until we get to the very standard of Christ, until we get to the very model of Christ, my brother, that we will not give up, that we will not give up a commitment, my brother, commitment to pursue Christ-likeness, where, my brother, your forgiveness will be like Christ's forgiveness. Where, my brother, your relationship will be like the relationship of Christ. Where, my brother, my sister, even your humility will be like Christ. You are so pure, you are so humble, you are so, you are harmless, my brother. Oh, pray and call upon the name of the Lord that the Lord will help, that the Lord will support, the Lord will do as good, the Lord will see us through. Call upon the Lord at this moment. Call upon the Lord at this moment. What about the commitment in searching of the scriptures? Oh, my brother, you can't do, you can't do away with this word. You can't do away with this word. You can't do away with this word. My brother, we need the word of God more than our necessary food. Like Job said, like David said, oh, I've, been, I, 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 I've loved this world. I have loved this world. I have esteemed this world. I have highly praised this world more than even my necessary food. My brother, pray, 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 and talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our most high God, we thank you for this very day. King of kings of a truth, it has been a glorious day. It has been a wonderful day, Father, for you to open your heart to speak to us, telling us that we must be steadfast Christian. That if there are type of Christians you are looking for, is this type of Christian, a Christian who is steadfast, a Christian who is unchangeable, a Christian who is lostly, a Christian who is so firm in his stand and his work with you. Oh, Father, you have shown us the way. You have shown us the way. You say, if that is going to be, then we must be committed in doing your will. Oh, Lord, I pray that the grace to do your will, Father, bestow it upon every hearer of this message in Jesus' name. Yeah. Where people even know your, your, your will. Where people know your will, but Lord, because of one thing, the other, Lord, they are not able to pursue, they are not able to be committed to this world. Father, oh, maybe persecution, maybe the pressure, oh God, from the home, the pressure maybe from the working place, pressure from the community, or oh, wherever, oh God, the king, that the challenges have been making this your people not to be doing your work. Oh, Father, we pray by your grace and your mercy. Oh, Lord, remove such obstacles, remove such hindrances from us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, wherever we're heading to, because of lack of, oh, God, not doing your will, I pray that this day your word have come out. You send this word to deliver us from destruction. Is there any way we are living and we are doing the will of the devil? Oh, Lord, I pray this day, let power change heart. Let power change hand and let it cause us to do your will only in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Amen. Father, we pray. Jesus, oh God, like he says, he said that for now, we don't know what we are going to be. But when we see him, we will be like him. I pray that Father, in the name of Jesus, even over here, 
Father, we can be like him. Oh Lord, I pray, empower us, oh God, to pursue, to do, to be like Christ in Jesus' name. In the, Father, in the name of Jesus, our relationship will be like that of Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, our humility will be like that of Christ. Your Father, I pray, and every other thing, oh my God, concerning Christ, Lord, as we pursue him, let those things be found in our lives in Jesus' name. And concerning your words, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jeremiah said, he has found your word and he eat it. And it was like a joy. Oh Lord, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, give us the grace to seek for this word. Give us the grace to eat this word. Give us the grace for the, this word to rule over our actions, to rule over our hearts, to rule over our ways, to rule over our doings in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I pray whatever will stand to take, oh God, the word away from our lives. Oh Lord, we pray by the authority in the name of Jesus. We resist it in Jesus' name. We bless and we glorify you. We believe that all that we have tabled before you, Lord, you have already done it. To you be the glory. Amen. Amen. In Jesus, mighty, victorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen.